Hello, my name is Gray. And my name is Crystal. And this is Busty Asian Beauties, a supernatural commentary podcast where I, someone who has seen the show several times, and I, someone who only knows the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. We are both Asian. So for today's episode, we will be discussing Season 1, Episode 3, Dead in the Water. So, um, Crystal, uh, yes. before you watched this episode, what were your expectations? Um, okay, so the things that I knew from social media, there is a child involved who draws pictures, who Dean is nice to, and Dean tells him about how after he witnessed his mom die, um, he didn't speak for a few months, I think, um, and was sort of just bonding with the kid. Um, I also knew that there was an evil lake with dark water involved, and also that Dean at some point jumps into the lake and saves the child. Um, I think that's about all I knew about the episode, because that's the only part that the Dean girls were giffing. Yeah, the the jumping into the water part really is the kicker of this episode. Like, it's the iconic shot. Yeah, yeah, where he, like, resurfaces holding the child. Okay, let's start with the episode. Um, yeah. So, episode three. We start in Lake Manitoc, Wisconsin. And mm-hmm. there is a girl. Her name is Sophie. And she's mm-hmm. walking around the house preparing for her workout. She says yeah. goodbye to her dad and does a bit of a bantery goodbye with her brother where... Her brother says, Guys don't like buff girls. Yes, and she says, Well, girls don't like guys who still live at home. Which, like, <laughs> it's, I just, it's, I guess it's a very American. I, I mean, like, I guess I'm not the most American American. So, like, maybe this is something that happens between sisters and brothers. I was talking specifically about, like, living at home being an insult. Like, oh, yeah. That's a no, very absolutely. American thing. Right. Or, like, I guess Western, just Western world, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, no, like, a lot of families in China have, like, three generations all living together. Yeah, exactly, right? Uh, I mean, like, here at home, you stay with your family until you get married, and even after that, so... Yeah. I I was like, oh, yeah, (laughs) this is an American show. (laughs) But, like, the brother was also an asshole, so it's fine. Yeah, no, the brother was such an asshole. And also, like, I don't don't have conversations with my sister about desirability. Like, it just felt like a very... It just was a very weird line. I feel like, like, if your sister is a varsity swimmer and has, like, gone for workouts every single day for, like, years and years like do you even need to bring that up anymore and if you are bringing it up why anyway uh so she goes to the lake to swim and Mm. there are some interesting shots in this scene very jaws like yeah so i noticed that but like i have never seen jaws so i might be wrong i haven't (laughs) seen jaws are you just talking about the high contrast between the water and the reflection no i think i'm talking about like the shots where it's from under the water and it's looking up at her and I was like, oh, this looks like something from Joss in my imaginary world where I have seen Joss and know what it looks like. So she swims around some more and then she gets grabbed by something down the lake and Mm -hmm. we see bubbling in the water, like showing that she's breathing underwater, I guess. And like, yeah. The bubbling stops, and the lake is clear, and there's a terrible slow motion effect going on. It's yep. so bad. What's going it's on? terrible. <laughs> they forgot to film at 60 FPS for this scene. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Their film camera acted up, and that's why the water looked so weird earlier, too. Right, so uh, now we're at a restaurant where Sam and Dean are eating. Dean is looking through a newspaper for cases, 
and finds the news about Sophie, who we just saw drown. Uh, then we see a waitress that Dean's being all flirty with. Oh, we get the shot that I didn't know was from this episode of him, like, grinning and chewing on a pen that, like, the Dean girls yes. are really into. It's a very famous shot. Right, and Sam comes and interrupts the flirting. Um, Dean says, you know, Sam, we are allowed to have fun once in a while. And then he points to Wendy, the waitress, and says, that's fun. Which I think is Dean misogyny count number eight. Do you agree? Because, okay, I was going to bring up something here about, like, flirtatious waiters, right? Because, yes. like, the waiter was flirting with him. Or at least we are supposed to think that the waiter is flirting with him. Yeah, so I don't, I think, like, flirting with each other shouldn't count. As a misogyny oh, moment. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have an issue with Dean flirting. I have an issue with him saying, that's fun about a person. Like, that uh. is not something that you use to refer to a person. Like, it's quite dehumanizing in my opinion. Uh, okay, I get what you mean. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know if we should count it as a misogyny moment. Maybe like a 0. 0.5? All right, all right. So Dean misogyny is at a 7.5. Dean tells Sam about um, the Sophie case um, and mentions that they had a funeral where they buried an empty coffin because they couldn't find the body, but it was for closure. Sam says, closure? What closure? People don't just disappear, Dean. Other people just stop looking for them. And Dean's like, oh, I see, but something's up. And Sam's like, yeah, no, I'm upset that we're not just actively trying to look for our dad right now and our working cases. And then Dean gets quite, quite up in his space with, you know what? I'm sick of this attitude. You don't think I want to find dad as much as you do? And then he, like, has, like, a moment where he's quite angry. Yeah, he says, I'm the one that's been with him every single day for the past two years while you've been off to college going to pep rallies. We will find dad, but until then, we're gonna kill everything bad between here and there. Okay? Okay. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts? Okay, in this podcast, I'm starting to feel like it's becoming my job to defend Dean. <laughs> it seems to be. Yeah, okay, but hit okay, with it. Because I am a younger sibling, right? Mm -hmm. So, to be fair, I, as a younger sibling, would never speak like that to my elder siblings. Like, okay, the, yeah. the very rude way where Sam was, like, passive-aggressive, right? So I was yeah. like, well, yeah, I mean, if if that was my sibling, like, they would get mad as well. But, like, I am I was beginning to think about it, and I was like, but I won't do it out of respect. Like, I do it because I think it's pointless because, you know, this person has authority over me, and they'll think they're right. So I'll just shut up. So maybe, yeah. like, Sam, it was good for Sam to speak up for himself, but... Personally, I wouldn't do it just because, like, my sister's gonna think they're right anyway. Right, okay. I mean, yeah, I think... I think Sam probably should have communicated more openly than, like, rather than being passive-aggressive. But, like, once Sam did communicate what his problem was, Dean got, I think, too upset. Um, right, like, like, I'm sick of this attitude is such, like, a parent authority figure thing to say when I feel like in the U.S. siblings are supposed to be sort of on an equal level regardless of their age relative to each other. I understand that, like, Dean's, like, bitter about Sam leaving, but I think, like, saying, like, oh, you've been off to college going to pep rallies is not very kind, especially when Sam's college girlfriend just died. Um, yeah. That is and true. also, yeah, and also, like, Dean ending his whole thing with okay, like, he's, like, giving Sam an order. Like, I didn't like that. Like, that that made me, got, uh, my, got my hackles up. Because I've been spoken to like that, so I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like as an eldest, I feel like, okay, as an eldest sibling who's often ordered around by my younger sibling, Dean doesn't make much sense to me. Uh yeah 
Well, I guess it's because of the age gap as well. Because their age gap is a bit weird because it's not too big, but it's also not too small. Right. So like, yeah. They like at certain moments they feel like miles away from each other in terms of age. Like the authority is so overwhelming, and then occasionally there's also the feeling of like they're just same age buddies, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think if Dean feels comfortable hitting on Jess, who is Sam's age, then he should feel comfortable seeing Sam as an equal. But also, Dean doesn't see women as equals, so... <laughs> anyway... Uh, anyway, so... <laughs> anyway, so they agree to go to the case. Yes, Let's they agree to go to the case, and we have a drive sequence over rock music, and... Of course. So they arrive at the house, and they introduce themselves as Agent Ford and Hamill, which is so, like, how did yeah, how like, does sure, someone not no one's ever that? watched Star Wars before, and they'll never <laughs> see through your, your epic, epic aliases. Yes, and they introduce themselves as U.S. Wildlife Service, so they talk to the brother... And the brother reveals that Sophie was a varsity swimmer, so she shouldn't have drowned because she's very good at swimming. Sam and Dean start asking details like, are there tracks in the mud? Were there any shadows? Etc. Etc. And the brother says, no, like, it was just a normal day. And then Dean went on to start leaving, but Sam stays behind and asks the brother if they can talk to the dad, which the brother then turns down. Yeah, very suspicious. Uh, next, they go to the police station where they talk to a local sheriff about the drowning. Um, and the sheriff's like, well, there are like no like carnivores that live in the lake. Um, there's nothing there. And then makes a Loch Ness monster joke. Um, okay, the, the Loch Ness monster yeah. joke, right? Like, uh-huh. Dean looks at Sam funny. Right. What was that look supposed to mean? Because it can I either think, mean I that the Loch Ness like, is real. Yeah, I think it's like either they're pretty sure the Loch Ness is real, or in general, it's sort of just like a, oh, uh, this a silly myth, little right? man doesn't think monsters are real, but we know they are. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like, so is Lo- is is Nessie real or not? And I wanted to know because they mentioned Loch Ness monster again a little bit later, yeah. and there was no clarification. And I was like, yeah. oh damn it! I wanted to know if Loch Ness monster is real in this universe. And then we find out that the sheriff did a sonar sweep over the lake and didn't find Sophie's body or any of the previous bodies. Um, and then he mentions that there is a dam that is falling apart um that they're opening up um so that the lake is going to be drained away i believe it's it's weird because later on they say that the lake would be dry right but yeah um, in here yeah, they like say... at first it seemed like it seemed like the lake was going to overflow the and flood the town like that's sort yeah of the vibe that's the implication but here then, but later on they were yeah, like but later they're like the lake up. will be dry yeah so i was um, like mm-hmm. okay sure yeah. and then and then we meet andrea Barr, um who's there to be very pretty um and she's the sheriff's daughter um dean sort of tries to flirt with her straight up um, and then they also meet her son, Lucas, who seems, like, very gloomy and doesn't speak to them. Sam asks if the kid's okay, and the sheriff says that he and the family have been through a lot. After that, Dean, continuing his attempted flirtations with Andrea, asks her about a place to stay, and then asks if she will walk them there, even though it's only two blocks away. Andrea is amused, but ends up agreeing. And then they they head out after she says goodbye to Lucas. Is this a misogyny moment? I... I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Like, I, I feel like... It made me it uncomfortable, definitely made me uncomfortable, but I'm not but sure. But I don't know. Yeah, like, I feel like... 
like I feel like like it is definitely like a level of flirting that I would be greatly uncomfortable with but I feel like it wasn't I feel like he didn't put her in a position where she couldn't back out like Say right no. so like yeah. I think like she I feel like she was like safe in the moment and like Dean wasn't a threatening figure so I wouldn't necessarily count it as a misogyny moment I just think it's more of a the audacity her dad's right there kind of moment <laughs> I know anyway so on the street mm -hmm. Dean is still keeping up with the flirting with Andrea. Attempting to. And he's saying shit like, Cute kid! Oh, your kid is so cute! Kids are the best, huh? <laughs> Dean! <laughs> and, <laughs> and they show up at the motel, which is, as she said, two blocks mm -hmm. away. And then she quips, she does a little quip mm -hmm. where she says, Oh, you must be, must be terrible for you with your sense of direction, never finding your way to a decent pickup line. And then she leaves, and then Dean is just standing there, like, a bit, um, I don't know what the word is, a bit flustered, but, like, negatively. Right. Yeah, I can't, <laughs> flummoxed, maybe? Flummox. wow, big word. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for being Dean-coded. <laughs> Okay. Right. And so he's just standing mm -hmm. there, and Sam berates Dean for his attempts at flirting, and then asks Dean <laughs> to name three children he even knows, which is so weird. Like, that's not how it works, Sam. That's not how you know you like children. But also, it was quite funny, so yeah. it's fine. So uh, now they're in the motel, and Sam's doing some research on other drownings in the lake. Um and sees that there were three this year, and then six spread out over the last 35 years. Um, so there's been an increase in death rates. And Sam says that he finds the lake monster theory not very realistic, because there haven't been many eyewitness accounts of a creature, because um, it seems like everyone that's ever seen this creature has died. Then they find out that one of the previous victims was Christopher Barr, which is Andrea's husband and Lucas's dad, and that Lucas was there when Christopher was taken and saw the whole thing, so they decide to go out and ask him about it. And also Dean says, no wonder that kid was so freaked out. Watching one of your parents die isn't something you just get over. Because I guess they, they need to bring up Dean's Mary trauma every episode, which is yes. fair. So, yeah. Okay, I have a question. Mm -hmm. the, the, the article with Lucas' face plastered on it, is that or is that not irresponsible journalism? Right, it does. It feels like you usually wouldn't like put a picture of a child like on there without... I, like, maybe with parental permission... Maybe with parental permission you would, but yeah, it's... It's just weird, yeah. like, this kid, his father... I guess, like, when you're in a smaller yeah, town I was where thinking, it's more It's like a local newspaper, so... Yeah. Yeah, there's probably... It's probably like everyone knows everyone, so it's okay. But I guess apparently it's but like it's still on weird. the internet, too. So they go to the park, right? Mm -hmm. And... They go to Andrea, mm -hmm. and Andrea is sitting there like, Oh, this, oh, I'm here with my son, so don't bother me. And Dean's like, Okay, I'll talk to your son. And Dean goes to talk to Lucas. So they're sitting down in a park bench, and Lucas is drawing with crayons on the bench with a bunch of toy soldiers beside him, which Dean plays with for a bit. And he's like, oh, I used to love these things. And he does a little mime thing where he plays with it. And I was like, aw. And I was like, he's boo. A sweet, he's a sweet man. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the lore with the toy soldier? Um, oh, 
in Swan Song, doesn't Sam has a have a flashback of him playing with them with Dean and the Impala, and that's what gets him to break yeah. loose the first. Control? So like in the Impala, there are some toy oh, like soldiers wedged. stuck in the vents oh. or something. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, that's a is that a callback? Is yeah. that what is that? But you know, I was like, oh. In retrospect, it's very sweet to him be like. Mm. Oh, I play with these, and then you see it later in this in the show. I am enamored by Dean in this episode, mostly because he's wearing the leather jacket. Okay, I'm very angry at Dean and Andrea's writing in this episode. <laughs> Andrea's writing, I think it was like a writer misogyny. Yeah, moment, it was like a writer we misogyny. Last time. Moment. We can discuss so, like, it I'm later, not... I guess. We can. We will we discuss absolutely it later. Shall. <laughs> We can, must, and should discuss it later. But he was wearing the leather jacket, and I was like, because <laughs> earlier this week I bought a leather jacket yeah, that yes, looked, the did. color looks very similar to his, and I was like, look, it's my cosplay. <laughs> so, so he goes to Lucas again because Lucas is ignoring him, and he goes, so crayons, huh? Uh, that's okay. Chicks dig our. Can I add a point? Can like I add that. a point? Can I add I was a point? Like, you weirdo. Can I add a point? Okay, you can okay, add a point. Okay, yeah. I this like, kid you is like weirdo. five. Like, this is not one of this the child's... The kid is not five. Okay, the kid's like I don't, eight, ten? How old are children? Yeah, maybe. The maybe kid's eight. like eight. This is not a priority right now, especially when he's like very busy being traumatized. <laughs> Yeah. Also, it's like, I don't know, it's just weird. Like, Dean shows up and he's like, I have to connect with this boy child. First, I will pretend to do war. Next, I will talk about seducing women. These are the ways in which I will connect oh to the boy child. Like, what's wrong with you, Dean? Yeah. Well, Dean is, you know, as we know, a fucked up little yeah. man. So he looks at the drawings that Lucas are making, and they're mostly spirals and bikes. Mm. And Dean says, like, oh, these are pretty good drawings, which I was like, they are not good drawings. We see, we is, like, see fully Dean eight draw later old. and the kid's better, though, so. <laughs> well, the- <laughs> that's true. But still, I was like, why would you say, like, oh, this is pretty good to, a, like, an eight-year-old kid? I have a five-year-old sister, and she draws better than this kid. <laughs> He's just trying anyway. to get in the good graces of Lucas. Yeah, and also, okay, I'm gonna bring it up now, but like, I was supposed to bring it up later, but um, he keeps on saying, when I was your age, mm. when he's talking about Mary, yeah. right? And we know that De- that Mary dies when Dean was yeah. four. So, is it implied that Lucas is supposed to be four years old? God, I hope not. I hope not, because that kid is fully eight. <laughs> And also, like, I was I was wondering a while ago, like, are white kids that just that much bigger than Asian kids? Like, what is going on? Yeah, I mean, I really cannot guess child ages at all. Like, anyone who's, like, under 12, I'm like, you could be 4 to 8. Dean starts talking about Lucas's dad and how he can relate because, and then he he stops short. Because it's supposed to be a mystery for Lucas, I guess. And the most ham-fisted sad piano <laughs> Yeah, I know. Playing. I made a note of that. This whole episode is full of a ham-fisted sad piano. It's so... <laughs> anyway, let's proceed. So, Dean draws a family portrait, which, aw, good for him. The drawing is so bad, it's though. Awful. Like, Dean's drawing is so bad. Right. He's like, but, like can I, I mean... draw with you? I'm not bad myself. You're bad, Dean. Uh, we go back to Sam and Andrea, where it is revealed that Lucas has not talked since the accident. Mm. And this is the only thing that is exchanged between Lucas, uh, between Andrea and Sam, which I was like... Why? Andrea's husband just died. Sam's girlfriend just yeah, died. No, like they right. could relate to each other, right? Oh, right, they could. I guess maybe maybe Sam's like, not ready to talk about it yet, but I don't know. Yeah, but like they could have there could have been an opportunity. I guess they were like trying to dig the 
the the husband like the husband got fridge bro <laughs> <laughs> and they won't even acknowledge him all right i guess they just didn't want to talk about the husband because it would just seem really weird that dean was swooping in like right on the heels yeah, of exactly, this tragedy right? So I was so I was like maybe she could have talked to Sam because like Yeah, I just to, feel like if honest, she was Sam ever like I love like... my husband so much, he was so good, like we'd all feel a little weirder about the eye contact with Dean. They could have given Sam something to do. And also most of the time because in this show, they do this thing where, like, the Sam mirror connects to Sam and the Dean mirror connects to mm-hmm. Dean. And for once, I wish they could have had a thing where, like, the Dean mirror connects with the with Sam. Mm. And, you know, like, opposite day. Yeah. Because, like, Lucas is, like, they 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 really ham-fisted the idea that Lucas is a Dean mm-hmm. mirror or something. Like, witness a parent mm-hmm. dying. But, like... They could have made him connect to Sam, and Sam could have understood Dean better or something, yeah. you know? They keep on doing this, like, one-to-one connections, right. and I'm like, I'm a- like, I know this is episode three, but, like, further down the road, like, you do get tired yeah. of it. Also, I'm just, I don't know, like, I always thought that, like, season one was, like, a season where Sam is the main character, and then later Dean gets favored more and more. But, like, the three episodes I've watched, I'm like, the writers like Dean more, like, from the beginning. Like, Sam's getting nothing in episodes two and three. He's getting nothing at all in episode, especially in this one. Like, 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 what is he even doing? And it makes me angry, because he's a main character. He's a main character. Who cares about, like, Dean's blah 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 whatever? Sam also saw his mom die, so get over it. (laughs) Okay, so they continue talking. Dean shows up, and it's mentioned that the kid has post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. That's why he won't talk. Yeah. And then Lucas comes up, and in a surprising turn of events, he actually connected with Mm -hmm. Dean, and he gives Dean... A drawing of a house. Yes. <laughs> a house, yeah. Slay. Slay. Anyway. Right. Uh next we go to the Carltons where um the dad is sitting in a chair looking at a TV, like being just very still. And then his son comes over and tells him that he should eat. Um, but there's no response and then the son who as we remember is sophie's brother is using the sink um cutting up a fish um and then we notice that the water coming out of the sink turns brown and then is like why did he just leave the sink open like (laughs) i don't know maybe it's like you know how some people leave like the sink running when they brush their teeth because they find the sound soothing like yeah maybe like he just needs that like asmr while he's cutting the fish up (laughs) (laughs) and then like the the sink is also filthy yeah the sink is filthy and then like the the dark water is filling it up um and then the son whose name is will yes whose name is will um like pulls the plug out of the drain in order to get the water to go down but nothing happens and then he sticks his arm back in and then he gets grabbed he's like thrashing and he's grabbed into the sink where he drowns and then the water goes away dun 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 this this triggered like my disgusting instincts Mm. like Instead of fear, it's really disgust because the water's so filthy and the sink is so filthy, <laughs> and everything looks so like grainy and disgusting. Yeah, like, like I feel like in the past episodes, like I didn't really notice too much that they were shot on film. This episode, I was like, wow, this show was very shot on film. Like the coloring, yeah, is it's so, very gritty. Yeah, the coloring's so gritty. It's just, it's not, it's not like pleasant to look at, like sanitation wise. <laughs> So we go to the motel room the next day of Sam and Dean. It's morning and Sam walks in and he mentions that he passed by the Carlton house and discovered that the brother died. 
by drowning in the sea. Neat. And he relays this to Dean. So they start speculating some more. Why is the lake upping its body count? Blah, blah, blah. And they realize, oh, it's going to be dry in a few months. Right. <laughs> this is the part where I was like really confused. Yeah. But yeah. So they're like, oh, we need to solve this right away because this this lake won't stop until it gets what it wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So they decide, oh, they realize that there is a connection to, well, they decide that there's a connection to Bill Carlton, who is Sophie and Will's dad, because um, it killed both of his kids. So they go to the lake to talk to him. Um, they try to ask him some questions, um, but he refuses to answer. He's very down. He says, my children are gone. It's worse than dying. Go away, please. Sam and Dean leave, still suspicious of Mr. Carlton. And then they notice that the Carlton house is the house that Lucas drew which implies that Lucas maybe knew something was gonna go down there. So they realize they need to talk to Lucas. So they go to Andrea's house and plead to her to let them talk to Lucas. So she uh, she eventually says yes, and Dean goes to talk to the kid. He asks how Lucas knew about the house and all that, but Lucas still isn't responding. So. Dean tries to comfort Lucas by telling him about his mom. And he says that, oh, he says that mom wanted me to be brave. And I think about that every day. And I do my best to be brave. And he says, your dad may want you to be brave too. Lucas eventually draws a picture of a house with a church beside it and a kid with a cap on a bike. <laughs> he hands it to Dean, who says, thank you, Lucas, and then we proceed. Yeah. So... So what... How did you feel? Did you feel touched during that scene? It's like, the thing is, I knew it was coming already, so I feel like I wasn't particularly touched. Like, I've seen the gift sets. Um... I mean, I do think I was... I do think I didn't know about the I think about that every day. I was like, oh, I didn't know that this was such a, like, guiding principle in Dean's life. Like, the Mary figure really lurks large. So I guess it was it was interesting in a, like, in a way where I'm, like, interested in the mythology of Mary and how that plays out when she returns in season 12. But, like, because yeah, I don't exactly care right. about Dean that much, it didn't. Like, it didn't matter to me on a Dean level. I care about Dean enough for the both of us. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I was bringing it up because of the, again, this, this like, really cements in the first season the Mary mythology mm -hmm. of, like, it it was probably her uh it was probably John who told Dean that, like, Mary wants you to be brave, Ugh, right? Boo. Oh, God. Do you think Which, he like, told him that, like, on a hunt? Dean... Like... Because that would be yeah. so bad. If it was told to him during a hunt, like, man, that sucks. Like, knowing what Dean went through and having to be, and him having to tell himself that, like, I'm not allowed to be miserable or I'm not allowed to be afraid because I need to be brave for my mom. Yeah. Like, that is so sad. It is. It is. And, I mean, okay, we'll get to this later, but I know, like, near the end of the episode, he asks Lucas to take care of Andrea, which, like, yeah, yeah. is also very much like a, oh, this he, you're really putting a lot of parenting responsibilities on the Dean mirror to parent his parent, huh? Yeah, we're, we're really seeing a lot of Dean in this episode. Meanwhile, Sam is just a little bit of an asshole. Yeah, I mean, is Sam an asshole? Why would they let Sam do anything? Sam's not, I, I don't think Sam's an asshole here. I just think he just, he's he, just sort of I there. I will bring up the moments where I think he's an asshole a bit later. Okay, okay. But, but I was like, I'm still annoyed that they won't let him do shit. Yeah, I'm also annoyed. Like, he's the main character. He's the main character. 
Just because Jensen Ackles has longer eyelashes does not mean that you do not owe Sam some lines. <laughs> Give Sam lines. What what year is 2005? this? 2005. 2K05. Yeah. <laughs> right, so now they're in the Impala trying to find the house that Lucas drew. Um, and Dane mentions that Lucas only started drawing like that after his dad died. And Sam talks about how trauma can sometimes make someone psychic. Dun dun dun, foreshadowing! Wow. Foreshadowing! And then, <laughs> they're driving around, Dean's like, there's like a thousand houses that look like this. And Sam's like, well, the church is a good clue. I think it's very stupid that like they had Dean not take into account the church. At all. Yeah, like, I was it's like, like it's half literally the, the first drawing. thing you see. It's half the drawing. It's the, yeah, it's more noticeable than the house. Yeah, Dean says, "Oh, college boy thinks he's so smart in like like a silly little voice that I don't know how to imitate." Yeah, in a smarmy voice. College boy thinks he's so smart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that was such a terrible rendition, but let's proceed. The, the vibes are <laughs> the vibes are still correct, even if the tone isn't. Right, and then Sam says, what you said about mom, you never told me that before. You know, because he was watching from the doorway and was having his moment of like, oh right, my sibling's a real person that we all have sometimes. Um, and Dean's like, shrugging it off and says, oh god, we're not going to have to hug or anything, are we? Um, and then it just it just moves on because Mr. No Chick Flick moments simply simply does that. To be fair, again, I am defending Dean, right? Like, do you hug your siblings? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, you live away from your siblings. So, like, when you come back, you hug them, I suppose. Yeah, okay, there's, like, hugging upon reunions, and then I think... I think I'm fairly tactile in general. I mean, usually I think I just, like, like hook my chin on top of her head, like, while she's sitting. I mean, I don't think a hug would have been appropriate because Dean's, like, driving. But, like, I mean, like, the point the point of Dean's comment was just, like, oh my god, like, you're no being, like, moment. so emotional about this. Like, get over it. Whatever. But, like, I, I understand that, like, it's, it's a sensitive topic and he doesn't want to, like, further talk about it. So, like, being snarky is the way to to move on. So like I'm not I'm not upset at him for it, but it is just the larger trend of Mr. No Chick Flick moments. Yeah. Well, like I I guess I don't hug my siblings. Like if we if my siblings and I hug, I would crack a joke like Are you dying? Like Aww, it's that. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Because we're not particularly like we're tactile. Like we touch each other in different ways, but like not hugs mm. because hugs are like too emotional. Oh. <laughs> Hashtag deed coded. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm thinking about it now, and it's like, I think, like, every time I see my sister, like, standing somewhere and I'm bored, I just put my arms out to hug her. Like, I think I'm just very huggy. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, I I might be overly okay. huggy, and you may be, you may have the correct metric of amount of hug you should give one siblings. Yeah. Also, because, like, in like in the Philippines, mm -hmm. right? Like, we're still not doing face to face classes, right. so like, my, <laughs> we're just at home. So like, why would we hug? You know, like if if we saw each other after a long time, then we'll hug. Yeah. But if we're just hanging out every single day, yeah, like in the same house, literally twenty four seven. Yeah. Okay, like... but Sam and Dane have just seen each other for the first time in four years, so. Yeah, and they wrestled. That's equivalent. Right, they to a wrestled. Hug. <laughs> they that's their their man hug. Okay, so they find the church and the house. Mm -hmm. So they go in, they ask around, and they find out that apparently there was a little boy who disappeared years and years and years ago. His name is Peter, mm -hmm. and he disappeared after um, he was supposed to ride home in his bike after school, but one day he just didn't. And then he just never showed back up again. Mm -hmm. And then we get the it's worse than dying thing line yep. again. Ha and then Dean finds a picture of Peter with 
the with, with Bill Carlton, the guy who whose kids just died. Yeah. So he was like, "Oh, this is the dot." Yeah. That is being connected right now. Right. The willingness of people to talk on Sa- to Sam and Dean is like unreal. Yeah. Yeah, like they just showed up at her house and she was like, "Ah, uh, yes, my son who died perhaps 35 years ago. I'll tell you all about it." And at no point was she like, "How do you who are you, who guys? Are you and how do you know there was a boy with a baseball cap and a bicycle here at some point? You are like less than 35 years old. What's wrong?" Right. So then we cut to the lake. Um, where we see Bill Carlton there, like, talking to the lake. And he says, like, you've taken everything, everyone. I've got nothing left. I didn't understand. I didn't believe. Now I think I do. I think I finally know what you want. Spooky. And then back in the Impala, Sam and Dean are discussing the case. And they infer that, you know, Bill Carlton did something to Peter. And they race to the Carlton house. And so they arrive at the house, and towards the lake, we see Bill driving a boat, which, ca- like, it looks like it crashes on, like, an invisible ice <laughs> is what it looks like. And then it flips over and then sinks in the water, and Sam and Dean are just standing there like, oh my god. Mm-hmm. So, now they're back at the police station, um, where Andrea and Lucas are. The sheriff is quite suspicious of them and sends Andrea away. Um, and then... Lucas is very scared. Yeah, Lucas is very scared. He, like, grabs Dean's arm. He's, like, shaking. Um, Dean's, like, trying to calm him down. And then, like, Andrea and Lucas just walk away. The sheriff's, like... It makes no sense that this guy's boat tipped over and then he got grabbed. And then he's like, also, I know you're not actually with Wildlife Service. If you don't leave now, I will arrest you. And so they leave. leave. (laughs) So we go to to Andrea's Mm -hmm. house. So I guess the bar's Mm -hmm. house, right? Uh, where Lucas is frantically drawing spirals, and Andrea is like, Oh, why are you doing that? Let's get you to bed. Sam and Dean are driving, but Dean seems reluctant to leave, and then he ends up driving back to town. And then we see that Andrea is about to put some water in her bathtub and get in. Uh oh. And then we're back to Sam and Dean, and Sam's like, the case should be over because if Bill killed Peter, and now Peter got Bill, then Peter should be fine now. But then Dean says, like, I just don't want to leave this town until I know the kid's okay. Which is which is kind of sweet. It's kind of sweet. And Sam says, who are you and what have you done with my brother? Okay, this is the part where I'm like, Sam, you asshole. Yeah. Like, what an asshole thing to say. It's such a statement. Like, obviously, Dean has a tough guy exterior, but, like, one look at him and you know that it's just an exterior. Yeah. Like, he is obviously caring and all that shit, right? I guess. I guess I sort of just, like, maybe I sort of just saw it as an extension of Sam's previous, like, oh, yeah, you love kids, like, name three kids, you know? Like, I think maybe it was more of a, like, it's new that you like kids in particular rather than, like, a, it's new that you care about people. Ah, uh, I saw it as this, like, because it's so, like, from my perspective, it's so unnecessarily mean. But it makes sense if back in the day, Dean really was, like, the asshole that he exteriorly is. Yeah. So, like, if Dean only started softening after Sam left for college and Sam is seeing this Dean for the first Mm -hmm. time, like, it makes sense if Sam really doesn't know this Dean. Yeah. You know? So, I was like, oh, like, was 22 and below Dean really an asshole? Yeah, that's possible. I did know know that that line seemed kind of unnatural. But also, I think it's probably just, like, a result of, like, the supernatural writers, like, every time, like either of the main characters show some kind of softness, 
they like require the other one to like comment on it in a mean way so they can tell the audience like we know this isn't how a real man is supposed to act we know it's cringe af however it's cool and yeah good so like yeah like i feel like each time one of the brothers is soft like the other one like has to be a stand-in for the writers policing, like, the definition of masculinity. So I think that's- I think poor Sam just got saddled with that task in this scene. Okay, so we go back to Andrea, who is disrobing, and she steps into the bathtub that she's filling up. So she, you know, relaxes, closes her and eyes- And she doesn't turn off the <laughs> faucet! Even though, like, the bathtub is full the bathtub when she is gets full. in, yeah. like, it's going to overflow, girl. And also, like, the way the way she's, like, um, you know, like, looking kind of to the side with her eyes closed with a little bit of a smile. I was like, I never look like this when I'm bathing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm positive I don't. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's very much, uh, like, yeah, like a... An idea of what women look like when they're relaxing when, and naked. When bathing. So the water turns dirty. She starts drowning. Like something is pulling her down the tub. And Lucas is pounding at the door. So Dean, Sam and Dean are at the entrance and they're like bantering like, Oh, should we go in? You think we should? It's very late in the night. And Dean buzzes the door and immediately Lucas swings the door open and starts running up the stairs. Sam busts into the door while Luke, while Dean holds Lucas back and he lifts Andrea up from the tub mm. and then uh, gets her out of the yeah. tub. Did it really while have they to are be all a looking bathtub? at her naked yeah, body. Did it really have to be a bathtub scene? Like... There are so many other ways one can interact with water in one's life, but like they chose the bathtub for the woman and the sink for the man. She could literally be washing her face, and but I guess that would be a repeat of like right um the sink. Thing. Yeah, no, I just I just it's... feel like awkward for the actress. Because they were like, okay, you're going to be naked, and then Jared Padalecki is going to grab you out of the tub, and the whole time, position your arms so that they're covering your nipples, okay? Like... Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yes. But, I don't know. Like, it's a scene. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's like a, a more dramatic rescue, like when there's a bathtub involved, because you sort of have to grab the whole person out. Um, but yeah, no, yeah. It, it it definitely, there was a, a tinge of writer misogyny there. Yeah, I I would say so too. Yeah. So. Right, so, yay, Andrea's alive. Um, and Sam tries to talk to her about what happened, and Andrea's crying and thinks that she's going crazy. And she tells Sam that she heard a voice that said, come play with me in the water. And then Dean, who's looking through books in the house, sees that um, Peter was friends with Bill Carlton and also Andrea's dad, the sheriff, Jake, when he was young. Um, so they put together that perhaps the sheriff and Bill were both involved in Peter's death, so Peter's going after the sheriff's family as well. Um, and then they see that Lucas is looking out the window and he like runs to a spot. Um, Dean and Sam start digging there and they like within like three inches of the soil <laughs> that there's yeah, a bicycle. They were buried. not digging deep. And then they look up and the sheriff is there pointing a gun at them and is like how did you know that that was there um because it was like two inches under the dirt my dude dean accuses the sheriff of murdering peter when they were kids andrea sees what's happening and goes outside um and sort of like tries to stop the sheriff from firing on Sam and Dean. Um, Sam explains that Peter's spirit is gonna kill all of the sheriff's loved ones. 
Yeah, just just general explanations about ghosts. Um, okay. While all this exposition was happening, we go to Lucas, who gets up and out of the house. Andrea is still confronting her dad about like what actually happened because she heard Sam and Dean saying that like you killed this kid, and then you just let his body sink to the bottom of the of the lake or whatever. Mm. And the dad reveals what really happened, which was that he and Bill Carlton accidentally drowned Peter while they were bullying him. Yep. They, they held his <laughs> head under the water. Yikes. For too long. And then he drowned and they let the body sink. While all this is happening, they discovered that Lucas was actually out of the house and now on the edge of the lake. And then gets grabbed into the lake by a hand. Yeah, I wish they hadn't shown us the hand. Like, it was a lot cooler when people were just, like, getting dragged in and drowning. But, like, like that, that little baby hand, I was like, who cares? No, I guess, like, because the Lucas is a small child, mm. right? So he can't reach the water without really stretching. So they had to have the hand yeah. there. But, like, I wish, like, he was able to reach the water yeah. and, like, just get grabbed, you know, like, with what's inside the water already. Mm-hmm. Like, I, that would have been a cooler yeah. shot. But, alas. Yeah. So, Sam and Dean dive into the water. Oh, my heroes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, they were probably like, well, Peter has no issue with us, so, like, we should go in and Andrea should. Yeah. They, it was no hesitation at all. And I was like, oh, look at them. They're literally just diving. And then the police off. Uh, so they're going around looking for Lucas in the lake. And uh, the police officer, Jake, starts pleading to the ghost. He goes into the water as well. And he starts waddling in the water. Um, like, Peter hears Jake and takes Jake and drowns him. And then Sam and Dean continue to look for Lucas. And when Sam has given up, there in the far distance, we see Dean holding Lucas. He surfaces from the water while holding Lucas and takes a deep breath. Yeah. And this was all shot in slow motion, and this one actually looks good. Yeah. Oh, I, I still think the, the high contrast, low saturation... Like, was, like, especially apparent and kind of bad-looking this episode. It looks exceptionally low-budget yes, in that's this episode. What it, yeah, it looks reason. like a very low-budget horror movie, which it basically is. Right, yeah. so now we get to the the last scene. Um, So Dean and Sam are ready to leave. Dean's a little down, and Sam says, Look, we're not going to save everybody, because um, Dean's upset about the cop. And Dean says, I know. Then, um, Andrea pulls up. Her father just died, and she found out he was a murderer, like, within five minutes. But she's dressed very well, has her hair done very well, has makeup on, looks completely cheery and fine. Um, she shows up and says that she and Lucas made them sandwiches for their trip, and that Lucas made them himself. Um, and then Lucas speaks for the first time in the episode and says like in a little whispery voice can i give it to them now um and he does you know especially when you just almost got right, exactly and your grandfather yeah, like, just died that's when your post-traumatic your stress gets resolved and to return to the very lake where you got your ptsd be drowned by the thing that killed your dad, giving you PTSD, and then watch your grandfather be killed by the thing that gave you PTSD. Like, that's the best time to get over it. <laughs> Jesus, anyway. <laughs> right, of course. I knew it was coming, but it still made me so mad. Right. Yeah, like it's kind of expected that like the kids gonna be happy. Right, the kids the gonna end, talk at the end. for some reason. Supernatural can't leave a story sad. Yeah, like it always has to resolve everything. Right, like, like it was in like a positive and then way. Dean and Sam came around and they fixed 
everything. Um, Sam asks Andrea how she's doing, and she's like, well, it's gonna take a while to process. Um, Sam says, I'm sorry, and Andrea says, you saved my son. I can't ask for more than that. Dad loved me. He loved Lucas. No matter what he did, I just have to hold on to that. Um, which, you know, is totally something you could come up with, like, within, like, like, ten hours. Sure, whatever. <laughs> yeah, they are treating this like it's been yeah, months. exactly. Since, uh, like, Bill it's died. been a day. She should not be fine. But, okay, whatever. I guess she has to be fine for, for later happenings. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, so then, yeah, and then we cut to Dean and Lucas, where apparently Dean's been teaching Lucas to say the sentence Zeppelin rules, and they high-five. Um, and then, yeah, Dean has his line where he says, you take care of your mom, okay? Because, you know, that's the eight-year-old's job. It's the eight-year-old job. And then we have the worst scene in all of Supernatural <laughs> where Andrea oh my God. shows up and she kisses Dean right on the mouth and says, Thank This you. was a jump scare for Literally. me. Literally. Because, like, the last time I watched this episode was last oh. year. So I knew, like, pretty much the plot beat for beat. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, I completely repressed this kissing scene. As you should so, have. Like, Your brain was protecting you. I know. So, like, when it happened, I was like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was so shocked. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to happen. I did not happen. expect this at all. I was like, surely they will not force this poor woman to go through this after she had to go through everything else. But, no, like, she is yeah she almost drowned by the thing that killed her husband her son almost drowned her dad did drown and and now she, she found, found out, out that, that her dad he was a murderer. murderer and i guess her her current priority is is macking on dean also okay i forgot to bring it up last time because i was trying to defend yeah. Dean. but another thing that i was thinking about because it's quite similar yeah, right? Haley... like the girl is yeah. saved and then kisses Dean, and then this one too is quite Yeah, I was like, does Dean get one kiss per episode? Like, is this in his contract? Like, what's happening? <laughs> this is Jensen Ackles. When yeah, he, he was like, I will, was like, I need to yeah, get I will only one be kiss on this show per episode. If women make out with me once per episode, or else I demand yeah. a second trailer. I was going to say that, like, there is something sinister over the fact that it's the perspective is like this is Dean's reward. Yeah. Like he saves these women and then the women are like, Oh, uh, because we are saved by this guy, we ought to kiss him. Right. And like maybe that's not like it's fine to be grateful. Like I'm not saying that like these women were forced to kiss Dean. I mean but they were but, like, they were written that something... way. <laughs> <laughs> they were written to be forced to kiss Dean, but like uh like Oh, we're only kissing this guy because we're grateful. Yeah. Because he saved our lives. Right. Like, there is a power imbalance Absolutely. There. And also, like, especially, like, both her and Haley, like, earlier, like, Dean tries to flirt with them. And they're like, that's not yeah. gonna work no. on me, Buster. But then as soon as he saves their lives, they're like, oh, you convinced me. Come over here. Yeah. It's, it's, it's weird. It's bad. It's not weird. It's bad. I keep on saying weird, but it's bad, is what yeah. it is. It tastes foul in the yeah. mouth. Just like Dean's anyway. tongue probably tastes foul in her uh. mouth. Oh, uh, yeah, it's just. There wasn't she's not okay, realistic. To clarify, there wasn't I know there wasn't the tongue. tongue. <laughs> I know there wasn't tongue. I'm really glad. Yeah, it's just not realistic. Imagine if they just started making it. It's out. not realistic. Jesus. Yeah, like, I don't know, like, Lucas's emotional journey is like prized over like andrea's like this whole episode like she's not a realistic character she's just like there to give information and look pretty it's just it's not good for some um behind the scenes like <laughs> immediately after crystal watched this episode they messaged me and were like oh my god i hate supernatural i hate they, the way they treat their women yeah <laughs> literally truly i like, spent like I 10 minutes themselves. after watching this episode like sitting in my chair fuming <laughs> it's just yeah. terrible right so she says thank you 
And Dean doesn't even reply. He doesn't reply. He walks away and says, Sam, move your ass. He looks a bit ass. flustered. Like, let's leave. Like, how rude. How absolutely rude. Awful. Yeah, and then they get in the car, and, like, they wave goodbye, and they drive off, and, and there's music um, that is apparently, according to the transcript, moving on by Bad Company. And then, and then that's that no, episode. No, never heard of it. Yeah, neither have I. So they drive away, and the episode ends. Yeah, ugh. It's just... Okay, something else that annoyed me about this episode... Okay, like, we have... We have the scene where Dean's, like, looking sad, and Sam's like, we can't save everyone. But the thing is, like, like, in episode two, like, that guy's two camping buddies both got eaten to death, and, like, there was never a moment like that where it was like, oh, like, it's sad that his friends got eaten, you can't save everyone. Yeah. Like... For some reason, like... They're not relevant to right, the journey. Yeah, like, some of them are supposed to care about the murder or cop, like, sacrificing his life or whatever, but we're not supposed to care about the two other campers who got eaten in the previous episode. Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. But whatever. Okay, it's time for our best line, worst line segment. Yeah. So what do you think is the best line of the episode? Oh. <sighs> Okay. There's not much. Yeah, there's not much. Okay, I feel like I don't like that I'm picking this for best line, but um, I think I'm gonna go with like Andrea's, you know, like quippy little like must be hard with your sense of direction, never being able to find your way to a good pickup line, cause like I know it was just the writers being like, how do we make this woman likable? How do we make her hard to get so she's not. A terrible little slut just spreading her legs for Dean right away. But also, it is funny. And it did work. So, so I, I enjoyed that line. <laughs> That's actually my worst line of oh, the Oh, really? Like, I didn't like it. Okay. Because I was like, the quip was like, so, like... It was like, like, like you said, like, the intention behind it. I didn't yeah. like that it, they were trying to make out this girl as like, oh, she's playing hard to get yeah. or whatever they were trying to do. I didn't like well, it. Well, whenever people are mean to Dean, I just have to give them points. It's just <laughs> it's just how it is. I think the best line in this episode for mm-hmm. me is the one that's like actually related to the main characters, which was the Mary mm. one. Yeah, I thought it was, you know, it was because uh, uh, to be to be clear, the line was um, what was the line? Oh, like mom told me brave, to be brave. Yeah, brave. I think about that every mm-hmm. day, and I do my best to be brave. I do my best to be brave. I think it's you know a Dean thesis statement, and also like again like it elaborates on Mary as a myth for the Winchester yeah. brothers. I think it does, like, a lot of exposition for a very, you know, emotional and short line. Mm. So, good for yeah, it. Yeah, no, I think I think it was well-written and well-placed. I agree. What's your worst line? Chicks dig artists. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, Dean. He's eight! He's eight! Okay, what's your IMDb rating for this episode? I'm not sure. Okay, what's the thing your is, guess? I know that this is a very popular episode amongst Dean girls, so I would, I would think that it's at least higher rated than episode two. Um, but I'm not sure how much higher rated, and I think it's probably below the pilot. So I'm gonna guess like an eight point three. An 8.3. I was going to guess an 8.2 for exactly the same reasons that you said. Yeah. Like, it's probably higher than last app, but, like, significantly lower than the pilot. Mm-hmm. And also, like, Dean Girls like yep. it. You know how it is. Okay, let's search. Uh, excuse what? me? Oh, no. <laughs> I was, like, 4.2 over 10, but it's a Dead in the Water movie oh, from okay. 2021. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I was so shocked. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's 8.1 over okay. 10. Okay. Yeah. So you were you were pretty close. We were near. Yeah, once we were more, near. I shot too high. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, that's it for this episode of Bust the Asian Beauties. Next time, we will be talking about Season 1, Episode 4, Phantom Traveler. Follow us on social media. We are on Twitter at twitter.com slash beautiespodcast and on Tumblr at bustyasianbeautiespod.tumblr.com. You can email us any feedback, comments, or inquiries at bustyasianbeautiespod at gmail.com. See you guys next time. Bye! Bye.